Now, we know that you created similar funds uh, uh, of this type, fixed income funds, mm -hmm. uh, in other parts of Africa, specifically Zimbabwe and Cote d'Ivoire. Now, why the focus on fixed income funds? Uh, well, and the focus on fixed income funds really it because it's it plays into our core business. Uh, EcoBank is basically a bank holding company, and because of that, we run treasuries in 32, uh, going to be 33 different African countries. So that is one business that we know very well, and it's one place we've been able to trans to translate that expertise across very easily. Mm. Now, why Ghana? Because you know Ghana is a small market. Uh, we, it's it's not as big as markets such as South Africa. I mean, sub-Saharan heavyweights like uh, South Africa and of course Nigeria. So why are you launching this in the Ghanaian, Ghanaian market? What is there any appetite for this product whatsoever? Uh, well, uh, three things. Number one, at EcoBank, we do business in Middle Africa, which is everything that's not North Africa and does not South Africa. So everything in between that is what we like to call like land. Now, why Ghana? Well, Ghana is just the next step in a schedule of releases. We're also going to be doing one in Nigeria, uh, in, a, in addition to the one we have now in Zimbabwe and, and in, a, in, a, in Cote d'Ivoire. Appetite? There's definitely a lot of appetite for investment products. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the core tenets of EcoBank is to make sure that as we go through Middle Africa, we spread everything. We, we do all we can in our power to profitably improve the financial markets. And part of that is making sure that we provide the right instruments. And this is a fortuitous time to do something like that in Ghana, being that there's been a slight change. There's been a, actually a major change in the, in the pension market. SNIT is seeding the level one and level two. There are three pension levels in yes. Ghana to private managers. And those managers are, are really looking for investments to be able to, to, take a, to put those monies to work in. Mm. Now, I do know that uh, there's actually been a lot of growth uh, in the pension mm -hmm. industry in Ghana. Now, your fund will be investing in the copper bond, Ghana's copper bonds as well. Uh, talk to us about the state of that part of the fixed income market in Ghana, because the market is struggling to take off uh, here in Nigeria. Uh, of course, we have problems with high interest rates mm -hmm. offered by government bonds, um, and, and, and this ends up sort of crowding out our corporate investors. Uh, well, yeah. So, it's a, it's, a normal, it's a big problem everywhere. In fact, in Ghana, when you look at Ghana, where their TBO rates currently at 19 and change, those are pretty high interest rates for anybody to get into the market. And Ghana currently doesn't have any corporate bonds. But what we have set up is by setting up vehicles like this, we are setting up ready receptacles to be part of that market as it gets there. Because the corporate bond market is not a retail market. And if there are no funds like ours in the market, what you end up with is a total, a total buy and hold culture whereby the market doesn't, doesn't grow as it needs to along the way. But to start with, it'll be a lot of uh, government paper, a lot of government papers, some uh, negotiated commercial, commercial papers and investments with non-bank financial institutions. Mm, now, very quickly, where do you see yields going, I mean, in that uh, sector, in the Ghana market? Uh, we've seen the inflation rate pick up at a little bit recently to 9.1% 9, 9 in April. Where, so where, where exactly do you see yields going? Uh, right now, those yields just keep going up. I think the top end of the, I think at the last auction that the government of Bank of Ghana had, they had to cut it off at about 22%, something like that. If something doesn't, if something is not done to arrest the decline in the city, we're just going to see those numbers continue to go up, and they're going to have to offer those kind of rates just to make it attractive for people to keep their monies in cities. If not, people will just continue to get out of the currency, and that would depreciate the currency even more. Mm -hmm. So until something happens on the currency side, uh, the interest rates are just going to probably stay at elevated levels. Mm -hmm.